This episode of the Beauté by ABIG podcast is brought to you by Laser Trade. Hello and welcome to the Beauté by ABIC podcast, your online support community for the aesthetic and beauty industry. Here, we are strengthening and unifying the industry through representation, innovation and education. This is a platform created and dedicated to the aesthetic and beauty industry, valuing unity and advancement. We serve to represent, support and inspire you by connecting you with industry experts expanding your knowledge through educational pieces and bringing you the latest industry news. This is Beauté by ABIG. I'm your host, Stephanie Miller, and today's guest is Kieran Coates from Laser Trade. With a strong background in biomedical engineering and medical equipment design, as well as many years of experience working in the aesthetic device industry with companies like Candela and the Global Beauty Group, Kieran is an expert in the field of aesthetic equipment. He founded Laser Trade in 2019 after identifying a significant lack of safe options for clinics to buy and sell used medical devices. Laser Trade is now Australia's biggest online marketplace for used aesthetic devices and one of the foundation members of ABIC. Here to discuss the used device market in the aesthetics and cosmetic industry from Laser Trade, today we welcome Kieran Coates. Hi, Kieran. Welcome Hi, to Steph. our podcast. How are you? I'm doing well, Steph. Yourself? Very well, thank you. I was looking forward to having you on the podcast today. Well, we start our podcast in the very same way, and Mm -hmm. that is we ask our amazing guests how they actually came to be in the aesthetics industry. So my background is as a biomechanical engineer, um, and I I used to design and build systems for uh, spinal cord injured patients, as well as patients with cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, and various types of uh, neurological and uh, neuromuscular conditions. And... While I really enjoyed my designs and the builds that I would do, um, I knew that at some point, while I was very happy with my engineering work and my design work, that in order to successfully you know, run a proper business, you yeah. had to learn, as my mentor had taught me, you need to understand accountancy, marketing, sales, and the, the basic logistics of running a business. Um, so oh, yeah, all, point... all of the simple stuff, right? <laughs> not, not that, um, you know, but what, engineering is uh, is complicated at all. <laughs> uh, it depends on the person, depends on the person. But um, And so at that point, I did understand that I needed to understand sales was the most fundamental um, one. And I always had a passion for medical device given my background. Um, So I ended up joining the uh, team at Global Beauty Group, uh, working as one of their BDMs, and then eventually moving across to um, Candela and working there for a period of time as well. And that was, ended up uh, learning about the lovely uh, cosmetics industry and all of its ins and outs as such. Well, how lovely is that? Because both Global Beauty Group and Candela are actually foundation members of ABIC. So how special is that? And Kieran, what's even more special is that now Laser Trade is actually a foundation member of ABIC as well. So I yeah. just want to say thank you so much for supporting our industry. Um, what a wonderful thing to, to sign up for such a generous collaboration with an industry body such as ABIC. We're, we're very proud to have you as foundation members and extremely excited as well. No, look, we're, we're excited to be here too. I mean, a lot of what laser trade was founded upon was almost a uh, an ethical problem and a logistical problem when it comes to this industry um and so when we knew that abic was trying to tackle a lot of the ethical issues at large with relation to this industry it, it just made sense for us to be a partner there and to actually really work on these issues together and make a larger change than what we can do individually. Well, I love hearing that, especially from, you know, young, up and coming, extremely talented people such as yourself and your team as well. Laser Trade is an exciting, very promising and innovative business model. It's something that is going to and is giving business owners so much freedom. Please tell us a little bit about what Laser Trade is how does it all work? And, you know, how did it start? So the, the way that Laser Trade works, if you're new to the system, it's very similar to car sales, but with more additional features, as well as it's very specific to the cosmetic industry. So similar to car sales, if you want to sell any equipment, all you need to do is make an account, 
and then simply just post your listing with make, model, manufacture, year description, nice and simple. We post it online. We try to help find a buyer who's looking for that particular item that you're looking to sell. Where it is a little bit different though, is unlike car sales, there's a lot of more complex steps further down the track, unlike selling a car that need to be handled. So once a deposit has been placed, what we will do is we will work with the seller to help organize any condition reports that are required so the buyer can feel that they can get a full inspection on the system remotely. Then once that's done, we will then help organize the uh, sensitive freight shipping between buyer and seller, um, as well as handle the payment in the middle in a safe and a secure manner so that both the buyer and the seller can feel safe in the transaction. And further, once it arrives at the buyer's location, we then hold the payment for a three-day window. Um, and if there's no issues or complications within that window, that payment is then released to the seller and then the deal is um, complete and you've sold a system and you've got a new system on the other side. This is so innovative in our industry because we know that there are challenges when purchasing secondhand equipment. There's things that you need to consider. There's safety and efficacy. There's so many things uh, that come into a, a business owner's mind when they're thinking about purchasing a device or even a person that's in the industry that's thinking about opening up their own clinic that doesn't have the funds to be able to purchase a brand new device. Tell us a little bit about some of the challenges being faced by business owners when it comes to these used devices. I mean, I, th I think the easiest way to split this is into two categories. One, which is buying used devices. So if you're looking to buy some equipment yourself mm -hmm. and then selling uh, equipment, because they're two different categories. So when it comes to buying um, tr in the traditional manner before laser trade, it always was very hard to, firstly, you had to find the item that you were looking for from somewhere in Australia. Even once you found it, you then had to negotiate the price. Then once that was done, you had to go and inspect it, which generally meant you had to be somewhere local-ish. Um, otherwise, if it was across country, it was just logistically too hard. And then even once you got to that stage, you ended up in the conundrum of, okay, am I sending you $50,000? And then you're going to just, um, and then I just have to hope that you're not going to run away with my money and I'll get the machine. Or uh, am I taking the machine away? And you're going to have to hope that I'm going to pay you $50,000 and not just run away with your machine. So you ended up in the payment conundrum there and then having to then transport it back to your clinic Overall, if you actually ran through it all, it's actually not only incredibly difficult in terms of the amount of tasks required, it's also incredibly risky. So there are a lot of risks involved with doing the tra that sort of more traditional method. And then from the seller side of the equation, firstly, it's hard to find buyers who are looking for what you're trying to sell and actually advertise the equipment. And even once you do, do find a buyer, because of all those risk profiles involved, let's say brand new, your item is 100,000. Secondhand, it's worth 50. The problem is because of all those risks involved in the middle barrier, what happens is that buyer can't spend 50 on it because of the risks involved. So they'll offer you 10, 15,000, far below the actual value, but they need to compensate for that risk. And so what we're trying to do as a business is to make it so that one, you can, you can find people easier who are looking to buy and sell and to reduce that risk profile down significantly to make it a far more attractive thing to buy and sell secondhand equipment. Well, wow. very well thought out um, about all the, the problems that business owners encounter when purchasing and also selling equipment and what a solution you provide. You know what? We've heard the stories. We've heard the tales of things perhaps not going exactly to plan when you're purchasing through Facebook or Gumtree or or some of the other, I suppose, more non-secure places. Have you got any stories for us? Uh, look, I, I, I de we definitely do. Um, uh, we do hear from a lot of our clients with regards to their stories. Um, but, but rather than a particular story, I guess I could, I could sum them up into an amalgamation um, of mm. the, the, the traditional case and where it is that we've been able to listen to those cases and actually craft a system that would be safer and easier for everyone involved. So yes, please, as, please. As, we're, as we're saying, the first, generally the first step is that payment security step of who's going to send who the money and how do you actually make sure that it is um, both both sides obviously want the other person to send the item or the money before they release the item. Where laser trade is, is, is useful is because we are a third party arbitrator, we can actually assist both sides in a neutral manner, which allows the transaction to occur in a safe, you know, in, in a much safer mm -hmm. way. Further, because we're able to facilitate for sensitive freight transportation nationwide, it means that 
unlike the issues that you get on Facebook where you're having to buy direct from someone down the street, which has its own problems because you might be buying from a competitor and they might love knowing that you're looking to buy or sell something. But by making it nationwide, it means that you're attracting a, a larger band of customers who can buy and sell for the equipment you're looking to buy or sell for. Plus, it just means that you're not going to have to worry about the technical checks and the shipping because regardless of where the location is, it's going to be covered. So tell us a little bit about what you do at the point of, of shipping. At the point of shipping. So it, it depends on the individual items So we have a few different carriers that we work with. So when it comes to shipment, uh, firstly, before we get to shipment, we actually do a remote condition review. So that is for, it's the chance for the seller to be able to showcase the system as it is, because we know, we understand that our buyers they want to go and inspect the item, which generally means they want to take a look at it, make sure that what it was advertised was actually what's in the listing. Um, so before we even get to shipment, it's really important for us to make sure that what is being sold is truly what was being advertised and it is up to the expectation of what the buyer is expecting. So from there, we would then organize the shipment. So that could be either a sensitive freight um, a sensitive freight shipment, but depending on the size of the item, it, it can also go through a few different forms. And then once it arrives on the other side, it will then be unpacked. And then from there, uh, from there, that's when the buyer will actually have a three-day security window or like a review period where if anything is different from what the condition review was recorded at, it gives them the chance to say, hey, you know, what we ordered was this, but it's missing this handpiece or it wasn't up to expectation, which then allows the laser trade team to arbitrate that situation where, again, in the historical sense, if you're buying directly from another clinic, Often it's once the money's in the bank account and you leave that door, that's it. And so it's it's designed to be a fairer system for both buyer and seller should those situations arise. I think that you've actually removed a lot, a big bulk of the risk, if not all of the risk from a, a used device transaction. Honestly, it's really genius to do so because there's a lot of people new people to our industry looking to say set up a business or even run one single room what are the benefits of going down the track of purchasing a used device especially when you're starting out or yeah, when you're yeah. wanting to expand your clinic i mean to take the the extrapolation over to the car industry one word that's really comes to mind is depreciation um sounds like a bit of a funny word to go to but mm. When you're buying new equipment, there is always a depreciation cost between new and secondhand. And it's a it's a serious cost. So in the case of a car, you buy a car brand new for 40,000, 40, two or three years later, that car might be worth 20,000, 25,000. But if you're buying that car depreciated at 25,000 already, in a few years time, it might only be 15,000, 20,000. The depreciation curve tends to flatten after time. And so, especially if you're a new clinic starting out, starting a business is a risky thing in itself. It's a fantastic thing to do. And I recommend everyone do it, especially if you have that drive, but there are serious risks involved. And to put a blind eye to risk is insane. You should be looking into these risks. Now, risk mitigation is important. If you were to buy a secondhand system and then a year later, you need to sell that secondhand system, the change in, the change in value is actually not that significant compared to new to secondhand which means that should anything, uh, should you need to change direction in the business or you need to, um, you know, e exit for whatever reason, the depreciation hit is nowhere near as severe, which actually helps you significantly. Did you know that it's easy to sell your old devices to active buyers across Australia? Did you also know that you can buy used devices safely with secure payment easy delivery and condition assurance? Lasertrade.com.au is Australia's leading marketplace for buying and selling cosmetic devices like lasers, IPLs and more. If you're looking to get the best return from selling a used device or looking to save by buying pre-owned equipment safely, visit lasertrade.com.au today. So that's probably one of the major considerations is just in the pricing category. The other thing worth considering is if you are looking into new equipment and you are starting out a, a business, it's still worth looking at that secondhand market. Because if you're buying a, an item for $100,000 and the secondhand market doesn't exist, again, in two years, three years time, when you need to sell that item or you're looking to trade up, that $100,000 investment is, is entirely combusted within that three-year period. 
However, if you are buying something that has a strong secondhand market and you've investigated that already, you can buy new equipment at $100,000. And then by the time you come to sell it, you know that you can recover 50, 60% of the cost in that period. So the, the real cost of that purchase was not $100,000. It was the thirty dollars or $40,000 gap difference that exists. You know, these are, while these may sound like uh, large, boring financial numbers, these are incredibly important considerations if you're looking to start a business and it's, you know, tens of thousands of dollars uh, at stake as such. Mm. You know, it's interesting. It's probably something that escapes most people when they're going into an industry and when they're going to set up a business in an industry, whether or not there's a strong secondhand market for any equipment that they may be using. And that's, that is a really strong consideration, isn't it? That leads me to another question is what about servicing? We've got this secondhand device. We've purchased this, purchased it through Laser Trade, which is a conduit for, for the facilitation of that. Mm-hmm. Have your device, then you need to service it. What, yep. what uh, challenges do I suppose business owners have with that and what options do they have? Yeah, so and this is going to come down to a manufacturer by manufacturer basis. Mm. So some manufacturers are fantastic at supporting their secondhand market. And so that would either mean they have access to parts, access to training, access to materials. Um, and sometimes they may not directly support it, but they might support it via third party technicians. So they may not service it, but there are third party technicians out there who have access to the parts and servicing. On the other side of the equation, there are some manufacturers who um, choose to support their secondhand devices very, very little. And again, that goes down to the scenario of what I was saying before. You should be very careful buying new equipment for suppliers that are not supporting the secondhand market because if anything ever happens, that's that, that investment is entirely combusted there. You can't resell it on for a, a secondary value. So when it comes to the servicing side, we do work with quite a few different third-party technicians on a variety of different things. Um, we do always uh, leave the technical question up to the up to the individual as to how they would like to do it. Some people would like to go with the original manufacturer. Some people would like third-party technicians. In a lot of cases, uh, m- many of our clients will actually even take out service contracts with the manufacturer themselves. So while you're buying a secondhand item at a lower cost compared to a brand new system, you can actually still have that security of knowing that should anything occur with your item, you actually have the uh, the service contract in place to make sure that you are covered from a technical perspective from the manufacturer. Again, this would vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. It's not something that's applicable to all, but some manufacturers um, are much more happy to support the secondhand market and others not so much. So uh, it's definitely worth uh, investigating with the manufacturer of whoever you're looking to, if you're looking to buy an item, investigate with the manufacturer and just check exactly how they support the secondhand market. Would they give you servicing and training and any support ongoing? Should you buy a secondhand system or should you sell your sec- your brand new system? Would they support the secondhand buyer? I think that's a huge consideration for business owners and definitely doing their homework before they go ahead and purchase a device is very important. It's great that we've got some manufacturers out there that are so willing to, you know, support the secondhand market, even offer service contracts for that used equipment. It's wonderful. I know many of our foundation members uh, also support that secondhand market and it's very smart to do so as well. I would love to know, Kieran, how many machines, how many devices do you have currently on the laser trade website i'm putting you on the spot there give us a ball on the, on the, on the spot uh, i mean it's, it, it's, it's definitely it's definitely in the hundreds i know i mean just to give a, a an example of volume in the last year we helped clinic sell i believe it was 4.2 million dollars worth of equipment in the in the previous 12 wow. months um so we do we do sell a lot of equipment and that's why we do actually have the expertise in regards to like assisting in these sales and actually getting if there's something you're looking to sell, we have a lot of buyers looking for, for what to buy um, to actually help close that gap and make this a you know a smooth and efficient process as such. Mm. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely in the hundreds in terms of uh, active listings right now. I love how you say we have we help sell. Uh, you are not a seller yourself, so it is so distinctive what you do. You assist in the process. You don't actually purchase the devices and then on sell them for a profit. It's it's quite an interesting business model. I think it's something that's so needed on both sides. It's not just the buyer that benefits here. It's the seller that benefits here. You're not taking anything away from the person that's wanting to sell their equipment and upgrade. Mm. Tell us, what type of devices do you have? 
the same. Oh, everything. If it's in this industry, we probably have it. Um, so we've done things from as small as we, in the past, we've even sold treatment beds and needling pens. We've sold all the way up to $130,000 picosecond lasers, NDAG lasers. Effectively, if it's a uh, what, what what would be traditionally called a capital equipment or a, an item that you would be using that has a reasonable value and would be used between each treatment. So again, like your IPLs, your lasers, your uh, RF systems, cool sculptings, that anything where at the end of the treatment, you still own it in the business, that's probably the type of thing we sell. So anything that is used for delivering any type of service. Yeah, as I said, we, we, do, we do the whole lot. In, in more recent times, we have looked into things such as like selling individual hand pieces. There's a little bit of that, but it's primarily your big bulk systems from all different types of manufacturers across Australia. That's super cool. You know, you were talking about servicing. Let's touch base on that one again. Uh, mm -hmm. When you were talking about Pico lasers and so many different devices for skin, how satisfied are clients purchasing used devices? So far, we've, we've got a history of five-star Google reviews, which we're very thankful for with all of our customers. So we definitely have a lot of happy customers out there with regards to the satisfaction side, just in terms of managing to get equipment at far lower cost. And then mm. when it's, there, is a, there is a certain uh, concern that a lot of our buyers have that by buying secondhand, it's not going to be as good or it's and mm. things like that. And then once they have it, they realize it's fantastic. It does the job. And by saving that money, they can invest that money elsewhere. Um, so definitely mm. a lot of happy customers. And I think one thing I would like to just touch on personally, um, which you, you mentioned earlier, is that internally as a company culture at Laser Trade, we actually don't sell anything. We just do service. We like It's something that is right down to our bones. And I really have to thank Alex and Paul with regards to um, instilling that company culture. Mm -hmm. We don't sell anything. And even right down to our team, we only, our entire focus is on service. It's here are people who are looking to do a thing. How do we best help them do that thing that they're looking to do? And it's, you know, to that degree, I think, you know, I like to hope that our customers do appreciate the service that we do. And from what I can see, you know, we do feel that love from a lot of our customers uh, coming back after the transaction. So well, that's wonderful. It means that they're happy with, with purchasing a used device in the end they have the same benefit as using as purchasing a, a brand new device because at the end of the day you're right you get it serviced well you make sure it's a safe sale and you have a perfectly functional new piece of equipment in your business that will help you grow your business tell us a little bit about training when you purchase a new device usually from the manufacturer you get training with the with the device how hard is it to obtain training? Yeah, again, similar to the servicing side of the equation, it's very much a uh, depends on the individual that's buying. Quite often, they will go to the manufacturer, and some manufacturers will support um, training, some others won't. Most manufacturers, though, will support training at a cost, which is a fair enough thing because there is a real cost for the manufacturer to deliver of a course. training for for a clinic. There are some of our clients that would opt to go for more of like a third party training, so something more like rather than getting specific from the manufacturer, they prefer to get a more broad training from a third party. And quite often, even a lot of our customers are clinics where they may not even need the training because they may be buying a second system. So they've already got one, their entire team are already trained, they're opening up a second location or a, a system for a second room, they don't need the bells and the whistles, they don't need the brochures and the marketing material and the posters, they've got all of that. They're really just looking for a system that can deliver the same service in another location or having a second one in the same clinic. And they've already got that relationship set up with the manufacturer to get all of those, uh, you know, the things that you need to run a business effectively. So, so it really does depend on the individual. Uh, and again, we can help point them in certain directions, but we're not clinical trainers ourselves, um, but we can definitely mm -hmm. sort of aim to point them in the right direction. And um, on that note, ABIC's got uh, lots of different training organizations it works with. So um, I'm sure many of those would be uh, suitable for anyone who's looking to buy secondhand equipment through Laser Trade. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for giving us a plug on our own podcast. Do you know what one thing that stood out? You and your team don't actually sell anything. Almost refreshing to hear that you, that you provide service. For sure. In fact, uh, you know, talking about the service aspect uh, we mentioned before, we actually have internal KPIs where if you call, we we get back to every customer with a call generally within an hour. Um, and if not an hour, if you actually look at our, our internal statistics, most of them have gotten to on the call. We very rarely miss a call. And that's how important the service aspect is to us, that if there's something that you need, especially if it's within business hours, if you give a call, we will answer it. If the team doesn't answer it, it will actually bounce through to myself or, or Paul or Alex and someone will wow. be able to get to you. So, yeah, you know, we do put beautiful. a high... We do put a high emphasis on that customer service to make sure that if there's an issue that you have, you can either reach us on the live chat during business hours or a phone call and someone will get to you. You know, that's the beauty of dealing with local 
businesses and businesses that are very niche in uh, in what they do is that they specialize and they really, really concentrate on giving great customer service. It's such an interesting industry that we're in. You're obviously not inherently from the industry, but you've migrated over to this industry, you know, for, for various reasons. And now you're here, hopefully here to stay because you're providing a great service. But the future of the industry, how do you actually see the used equipment market changing in the future? And and also, what are your plans for laser trade? With regards to how the market changes in the future, it's worth looking at the market at large. So right now, there is a very, uh, very large amount of uncertainty in the market, whether that's going to get better or worse. Now, Uh, This is just my personal perspective. And again, anyone who tells you that their perspective is uh, gospel is probably just lying to you. But my personal perspective is that the one thing that you do know in in your business is you're going to have to pay bills. You're going to have to pay staff. You're going to have to pay rent. You're going to have to pay equipment financing to some degree. And so while there is volatility in the future, the one thing that you can do is you can control your outgoings quite significantly. So in times of uncertainty, you tend to get a decrease in the expenditures as the way to retain control. So with that in mind, I would expect a higher level of both buying and selling of secondhand equipment, especially in a time where your financials may be more uncertain than they have been in the past. And with regards to the you know the amount of used equipment, it's something that we are growing year on year quite significantly. I, I do recall when we started, it was, it was sort of a mystery as to how this all works. Now we are here and, and, and most clinics do know that we are a trusted service and it's something that we can deliver and that used, buying used is no longer a strange option. It is there and is something that anyone can do. So with regards to the plans for laser trade, by having a very focused team, we really are just focused on that that core question of here is the problem of how hard it is to buy and sell secondhand equipment in this industry. How do we, and it's the same question that we were answering when we started is the same question we're answering now. It's probably the same question we're going to be answering in three years time. Um, And to that degree, we really are just focused on that same question of how do we make this experience better every single day. Um, So we do have quite a few different um, things in the pipeline coming up, which are answering that same question. So I think the future of laser trade is still, how do we make buying and selling equipment in this industry through an online medium better? I'd argue that's the, uh, that's the future. It's the same as the present. (laughs) Well, we do have, we have had hints. Um, I'm very privileged to have a hint of, of things to come. So if you're currently a laser trade client, Stay tuned for some amazing updates and changes to the system as well. And you are constantly growing, refining, improving your systems. It's already amazing, but the wonderful thing is you never stop growing and trying to improve, Kieran. And that's one thing that I really strongly admire about you and your team is that I can see your drive. I can see your passion. I can see your motivation is extremely altruistic in that you are there to really help people to do what they want to do, you know, which is in our industry, buy and sell um, used equipment. And you really facilitate that so well. You know, I just wanted to say thank you so much again for being so, so generous and joining us as a foundation member. It means a lot to the industry. It means that you actually care. Um, You walk the walk, talk the talk. Um, You're not just there to, you know, make a quick buck and, uh, you know, from from the good people in our industry are there to actually service them and to, to help them grow. And that is also to give back to the industry, make sure that our standards maintain um, and also elevate as well. So I just want to say thank you for for coming on the podcast, for supporting us, um, and for pro- providing such a wonderful service. No, no problem. Look, as I said, uh, we'd love to be here. Um, you know, I I do recall when we started, it, as we were saying before, this really was an ethical question. Um, mm-hmm. I do recall in the early days, uh, what actually was one of the seedlings of Laser Trade starting was a clinic where they had closed their doors, um, and mm-hmm. it was a uh, a middle-aged woman who had used all of her retirement money to start a business that didn't go so well, closed the doors, and she was negative quite a few hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and crying in the clinic room. And I thought, well, what do I do? I know I'll help us sell some equipment. And lo and behold, one after another, here we are. Um, and it's something that is still present today to a certain degree. So a, a lot of the seed of laser trade was very much an ethical um, question on how do we help these people who are in a significant amount of pain at this time um, and now it has morphed into, uh, you know, something a little bit larger than that. 
Um, but that's why I'm glad to be, we're glad to be part of AVIC and see what we can do to help with regards to um, the ethics of the industry and help make it a better place for everyone involved. What a beautiful story to leave our discussion on. I would love to have you back in the future and um, chat more about all the ins and outs of equipment and how to grow your business in that way. But for now, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you soon. No problem, Steph. We'll talk soon. You've reached the end of another episode of the Beauté by ABIC podcast, your online support community for the aesthetic and beauty industry. Thank you for listening and until next time, stay connected.